this webinar is about the re recent improvements and updates we've made to the Uniprod website and services as we provide them. My name is Clemens Pichler. I'm a curator with the Uniprod team. I'd like to start with uh, stating our mission statement, which is to provide the highest quality, most comprehensive, and most thoroughly annotated protein resource. This includes providing detailed information on a protein's function, its interactions, pathways, and the like. Obviously, we also provide sequences, including all the isoforms, disease variants, and post-translational modifications of sequences we provide. Last but not least, we provide stable identifiers, which we tend to call accessions for you and the others to use in their publications. How do we fulfill our mission statement? Um, we do this by providing several resources, at the center of which is the Uniprot knowledge base. The Uniprot knowledge base contains millions of protein sequences. We try to provide all the sequences available in the public domain. We, we add experimental information extracted from the scientific literature. We also provide complete and up-to-date reference proteomes, with a proteome being the complete set of proteins expressed by any given organism. Reference proteomes are those proteomes from species or strains of particular scientific and medical interest. We integrate large-scale genomics and proteomics experiments, and we also try and foster the interoperability between data and services in the biological, medical, translational, and clinical domains, for example, by linking out to specialized resources. This webinar is about two main topics, one being a peptide search tool that we provide, and another one being a redesign of the publications as we present them to the users. In order to introduce the former, I'd like to first talk about integrating proteomics data into Uniprot. Proteomics data help us towards the identification and characterization of cellular proteins and their proteoforms that might be present, absent, or altered under certain environmental or physiological conditions, including disease. What does this mean in the context of Uniprot? In the Uniprot knowledge base, proteomics data enable us to provide product-specific annotations. In this example, which is from a human sequence, you can see that, circled in blue, there's one isoform, isoform 1, which has specific annotation attached to it, which is only valid for this particular isoform. The functional annotation is complemented by specific subcellular locations that are attached to this isoform. Circled in gray is another isoform, isoform 3 of this particular protein, which has a different set of subcellular locations annotated towards it and backed up by experimental information. But it doesn't stop there. Proteomic data also help us to provide post-translation modifications and annotate them onto sequences. Such PTMs can be added onto sequences based on sequence similarity, like shown in the first box. Also, based on publications, that is to say, backed up by experimental information that has been published. Or thirdly, based on proteomics data as shown here. Obviously, most of these data also come with a publication. Now, as you can see, this, the example in the middle, added based on a publication, is specific to an isoform. This was added by a curator and was extracted from a publication. Proteomics data can provide a similar kind of annotation. In this example here, which is from another human sequence, we see um, PTM annotated onto a sequence that tells us that a um, serine residue at position 304 is phosphorylated specifically in isoform 2, uh, and that is data taken from proteomics experiments, in this case, isoform specific annotation. Proteomics mainly means identifying peptides in an experimental setup and mapping them back onto sequences taken from a database. How do we do this in Uniprot? In Uniprot, we have two data sets. One is in silico generated, shown on this slide on the left, and there's another one, which is experimental 
data that we import from proteomics repositories, and we have several of those that we import data from. I won't go into the detail of how the in silico data set is generated, even though some of the information is given on this slide. Please read it at your own leisure. It's also documented on the Uniprod website if you're interested in the details of this. Suffice it to say that this in silico data set generated is species specific, which means there's, for example, a specific data set for human. Both these data sets are combined and then used to annotate peptides onto Uniprot protein sequences. What it looks like is this. This is a graphical display of part of a sequence of the A4 human entry that you can find on uniprot.org now. Towards the bottom of the screenshot, you see the proteomics section uh, in light blue, which is unfolded, and you have um, a row for unique peptides in red and non-unique peptides in blue. One of the unique peptides, for example, would allow you with confidence to identify A4 human in a pool of proteins that might be your experiment. Um, clicking on such a peptide opens a pop-up pop that you can see here, which tells you that three different resources, Peptide Atlas, MaxQB, and EBD, have experimental proof that this was actually seen in experiments submitted by other researchers. On the contrary, uh, the non-unique peptide, as the one I've just um, added to the slide, would not allow you to um, identify A4 human in a set of proteins with confidence because there's at least one other human sequence that has that same peptide. So this view can be useful in a small scale uh, approach to identify signature peptides that allow identifying any given sequence with confidence. But what does it mean in the greater scheme of things? If we take a step back and look at all the human sequences that are part of the proteome as presented in Uniprot, um, which means all the sequences and their isoforms, um, having mapped those proteomics data, we can now say that 80% of all those sequences, proteins and their isoforms, come with at least one peptide matched to them, and so um, more experimental um, evidence. Only 20% of the sequences do not have that kind of evidence and might have other kinds of evidence, like at the cDNA level, uh, for example. Of course, this kind of proteomics data set is not limited to human. As you can see on the following page, there are many more data sets which include the usual range of model organisms, starting from C. elegans all the way down to um, yeast, and this is a set that is set to expand um, over time as we add new data sets to, um, to Uniprot. Having set the stage with this introduction about proteomics data in Uniprot, I'd like to move on to the novelty of the peptide search tool that we've added recently to our website. This tool adds, is added to the small complement of tools that we routinely present on the Uniprot website. You find it in the sort of top left corner of um, any entry on the Uniprot website. It allows you to find all Uniprot knowledge base sequences that exactly match any given peptide that you submit to that search knowing that when doing mass spectrometry analysis, uh, differentiating between isobaric residues like leucine and isoleucine is sometimes impossible. These residues can be treated as equivalent in the search and will still retrieve um, hits even if a leucine has to be swapped out for an isoleucine. The tool allows you to search for multiple peptides at once and searches can be restricted uh, to a taxon, human for example, or mouse, uh, or a higher level taxon. The interface looks like this. It's fairly straightforward. You have a box where you input all the peptides you're interested in, one per line. Um, like mentioned before, you can search for more than one peptide. Please note that all the peptides are evaluated individually, which means that if peptide one uh, generates 150 hits, whereas peptide two generates 200 hits, you will get 350 hits if there are no overlaps. Obviously, several peptides can match to the same sequence. 
the box for the taxon searches offers uh, completion suggestions, which means if you start typing um, mouse, for example, it will offer completions for that species or other species within that genus. Once a search is run, you're presented with um, the usual tabular view of um, results as is common to all the searches run in uh, uniprot, uh, run on uniprot.org. Um, all the searches are um, provided with a unique job identifier which allows you retrieving and coming back to those results up to seven days later. The positions of the hits um, onto each sequence are provided and the usual set of filters uh, that are available for all the Unipro searches is available um, here as well. Data can also be downloaded and customized before they're downloaded so that you can tailor the data that you actually need for your further research. Now I'd like to move on to the publications and the changes that we've made within the Unipro knowledge base. You might be aware of the fact that basically all the entries in the unit report knowledge base, whether they're reviewed or unreviewed, contain at least one publication. In the unreviewed section, it's those publications documenting the origin of the sequence and also mapped 3D structures. Those publications might not necessarily be papers in the strict sense, as sometimes people only submit and publish the sequence without an additional paper. I also refer to these as publications for the sake of simplicity. Upon annotation of entries um, by our Uniprot team, um, more papers and more publications are added, and those usually add functional characterization. All of these publications are contained within the entry and are available for download in the various formats. If, whether you download the text format or the XML representation, all of that's present um, in the entries when you download them. Obviously, it's also present on the website. On the website, in publications are available first and foremost attached to individual annotations as part of the evidence tags, um, as shown here. And that has been like this for a long time now. But then we now also have a dedicated publication view, which is a fairly recent addition to the website. Clicking on this publication link or the view opens this. Um, it's a new representation of publications that incorporates filters and also provides access to mapped publications. What does mapped publications mean? Um, circled in red here are the source filters for publications, which tell you that there are 26 papers added to this entry which have been reviewed by a curator, but there are also eight computationally mapped publications that you can access via this view and only via this view, so they won't be included in any downloads. This is specific to the website only. What does computationally mapped mean? Computationally mapped means that we import additional publications, first from curated resources. These could be other databases. There's PDB, for example, which deals with 3D protein structures, intact, a protein interaction database, Flybase, Wormbase, MGI, RGD are model organism databases who also do their own curation and provide lists of papers, gene-specific papers, to us based on their source, for example, PDB. These papers can then be put in boxes and labeled. PDB would, for example, get the label interaction because that's what PDB um, deals with. Oh, actually, it should be 3D structure. I'm sorry. The second way of um, computationally mapping publications is by text mining. We have two very um, conservative approaches. One is for a small set of plant species. Another one deals exclusively with variants in disease in proteins. All the results we get from these text mining approaches are filtered um, and are applied very conservatively so as to avoid false positives. Which in the end, using those categorizations, allows you to filter the publication view by category or by topic I've um, excluded a, a screenshot here. 
uh, applying a structure filter which only lists two out of all the publications that are present in this particular human entry, both of which deal with 3D structures. And that's the end of today's webinar with all the updates. Um, I thank you on behalf of the entire Unipro team for attending. Um, we'll keep the chat box open for a couple of minutes, so in case you have any questions, we will answer them. If it requires a longer answer, we're quite happy to get back to you by email and provide um, answers as much as possible. Please also note that you can find upcoming webinars using this um, link that's displayed here. Thanks again for joining in.